Hey filmmakers, today we're going to talk about the best camera settings and techniques that you can use when shooting at night and in low light situations. So let's jump right into the first setting and that is your frame rate. I'm almost always shooting at 24 frames per second, especially at nighttime because it allows me to let in the most amount of light into my camera. Even that little bit of difference between 30 frames per second to 24 frames per second can make a big difference and that's because of your shutter speed. So you want to keep the 180 degree shutter speed. So at 148th shutter speed on 24 frames per second that's going to allow you to let in the most amount of light possible because the shutter speed is going pretty slow. But let's say you even go to 30 frames per second. Now you're at 160th shutter speed so it's going faster and letting in less light. For those of you that want to shoot everything in slow motion at 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, well, nighttime is definitely not the best time to do that. If you're going to keep the 180 degree shutter roll, you're shooting at 1 over 250th shutter speed, so it's going really fast and it's not going to allow a lot of light to hit the sensor. So I definitely recommend avoiding slow motion at nighttime, just shoot at 24 frames per second. So the next important setting here is ISO, and a lot of amateurs and beginners think, hey, I can just boost the ISO as much as I need to to get my image properly exposed. Not the best decision to make because as you're probably aware, ISO introduces a lot of grain into the shadows and dark parts of your image and that can make your video look really low quality. So where should you set your ISO at? Well that's going to vary from camera to camera. For instance on my Sony a7S it's the low light beast, right? I can boost that ISO pretty high up to even 10,000 ISO a lot of times and I'm not seeing much grain or degradation of the image. But if I do the same thing on my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, there ends up being just a ton of noise in the shadows and it can really ruin the footage and make it completely unusable. So the amount of ISO you can use is actually going to vary greatly from camera to camera. So what I recommend is find the breaking point on your camera. See how far you can push your ISO until the image really starts to fall apart and get way too noisy. Wherever that level is, you want to be at least one or two steps beneath that. I mean, let's take the GoPro for example. It does really poorly in low light. So if you start really pushing the ISO on that camera, it's going to start to completely fall apart. Whereas the same ISO setting on the GoPro might look fantastic on the Sony a7S II or something where it handles that grain much, much better. Now, of course, the camera settings are not the only things that play a part in how bright your image is. A huge part of that is actually the lens that you use. So I always recommend using the fastest lens that you own when shooting at night time because of course it's going to let in the most amount of light. So this is the Rokinon 85mm T1.5 and it lets in a ton of light. You can see all that glass wide open and just tons of light is hitting the sensor. But let's say your lens only goes up to f4. Well that's going to be a lot less light hitting the lens. So you definitely want to grab whatever lens you have that opens up the absolute most, especially when you have little light to work with. This can really save your shoot. Another important camera setting to keep in mind is your picture profile. So if you're shooting on a camera that allows you to shoot more flat, I definitely recommend doing that. For instance, Cine 4, S-Log, film on the black magic cameras, all those will allow you to retain more details in the shadow parts of your image. If you shoot with picture profile off or something else that bakes in a lot of contrast, that will prevent you from bringing back those details in post-production and you definitely don't want that. So try shooting a little bit more flat and it'll just give you more information to work with later on in the edit when you're doing your color grading. So let's say that you have all your camera settings dialed in, you're shooting at 24 frames per second, 148 shutter speed, the highest ISO you can without introducing a ton of noise, you're shooting in a flat picture profile, but it's still too dark and it's not looking very good. What do you do next? Well, that's where some camera techniques, framing, lighting, and positioning of your subject all comes into play. The number one technique that I use every single time I have to film at night is shooting into a backlight. So let's say that there's a street lamp, a storefront, or something like that providing some light in your scene. Well, a lot of people would think, well, just go stand underneath it and that'll light them up. Well, if your subject is standing right underneath 
underneath the street lamp, they're gonna have some huge raccoon eyes and bad shadows. Or if they're standing right in front of a giant light, well, that's gonna light them up, but it's gonna make them look really flat and it's gonna kinda look unnatural for nighttime. So I just recommend putting that light behind the subject. That way it provides a nice edge and outline around your subject, allowing them to pop off of the background, but still have those nighttime shadows and mood without completely taking that away by having them all completely lit up. If you're filming a lot of weddings or nightclubs, it can be really tempting to bring an LED light with you and put it right on top of your camera and just shoot it at the subjects and the people dancing on the dance floor. Well, I recommend that you do not do that because once you put that light right over your camera, like I'm doing now, it lights up your subjects, sure, but now they look really flat and uninteresting. And sometimes they can look really even overexposed or have these weird shadows casting and it just does not look good. It ends up looking really amateur. So instead of putting that light right on them like a giant flashlight, you can use one of these lights as a backlight. So something that I like to do, especially for weddings, is bring a large LED light and a light stand or a spotlight and shine it right onto the dance floor. Then I use it as a backlight. So I'll shoot with the subject and then the backlight behind them so that you can see them dancing and having a good time, but that light doesn't take away from the mood and vibe of the dance floor. It just allows you to see the subjects better on camera and they're more outlined. So don't shoot from the same side that the light is coming from because again, they'll look really flat and the image will look really boring. Just use it as a backlight. I've used this technique of backlighting my scenes and subjects at night many times on many short films. You can see here in this camping scene, I'm using it as moonlight and I'm using it inside of the tent. And then out on this bridge, I'm also using it to outline my subject and get them to pop off of the background. Without this backlight, all of your subjects would just really blend into the background and it wouldn't look very good. Now on a recent short film that I posted on this channel called The Capsule, I lit up an entire forest with two LED light panels. Now I use them up on giant 10 foot light stands and then just beam them out across the whole forest in the background. That way the trees and the foliage and the subject would all get lit up nicely and edged out and you could still see them, but it looks like nighttime. As opposed to if I had just shined the light right into my subject from the front or even the side, it would have looked really unnatural and like there was just this giant spotlight or source in the middle of the forest and it wouldn't have made any sense. But with the light coming from the background, it looks much more motivated and like it could actually be moonlight in the forest lighting everything up. In some scenarios, backlight still isn't enough to actually light up your subject's face and allow you to see them. They're just way too much in shadow. For those situations, I don't wanna add another fill light to the front of their face. So usually I'll use a bounce card or a five-in-one reflector and bounce some of that backlight right into their face and it looks really soft and natural and not like there's another light just beaming onto them when there really shouldn't be a light out in the middle of night. That's what I did in the short film, The Capsule. I just bounced all the light back onto him with a five-in-one reflector so you could see more detail in his face as he's digging the hole. Another technique you can use if you want it to look like nighttime is shooting at blue hour. Now, blue hour is that time right after the sun sets and it usually lasts about 30 to 45 minutes when there's still some ambient light and the sky is very blue. If you use the right camera settings, it can look like it's the middle of the night, but you're getting a lot more details in the shadow without having to boost your ISO way up and adding all that extra noise and grain to the image. Don't be afraid to get out there and start shooting more videos at night because you can get some really awesome looking stuff, especially if you have your camera settings dialed in nicely and you can find a good backlight. Shooting videos at night is one of my favorite things to do because you can get such dramatic and cool looking images. And I want to hear from you guys. What are some other tips? tips and techniques that you can use when filming at nighttime, leave a comment below and I'll be sure to reply to all of them. And guys, if you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe right now because I have a ton more videos coming out and shooting, editing, lighting, everything like that. All right, I'll see you in the next video.